The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Do faith and works mix very well? How about oil and water? How is faith different in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Hope you'll stay tuned for the following episode. This is the Grace in Focus podcast broadcast ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Thank you for joining us. Find out more about us, our many articles, our books and our blogs and our videos by going to faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer and discussion, here is Bob Wilkin and Leon Atkins. They'll ask, if someone believes in Jesus for everlasting life, as in John 3.16, but they in ignorance make a promise to him like, I'll repent of my sins and serve you the rest of my life, doesn't God overlook our ignorance of by grace alone and save them anyway? Yeah, and uh, what would our answer be? Well, I would say they're adding to believing believing and making a promise. So grace is grace and work is work and never the two shall meet. So Romans 4, 4 and 5. Yes, you, you can't mix grace and work. So I would say they're trying to mix grace with works and it just won't work. It's got to be by <laughs> grace alone. Right. <laughs> Through it, faith alone. Right. And so the answer would be no. If a person, and by the way, this is the vast majority of Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. Most people would say, I'm believing in Jesus, and they might even say for everlasting life. Normally they would say salvation, but if they use the words everlasting life, what they mean is a chance at it. I've got probation, Mm -hmm. or I'm going to win it if I persevere to the end. But either way, they think I've got to persevere in order to be with him forever, And if that's their view, they've not yet believed the simple message that whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. I'm doing my part, and God will do his part, but God does it all. Jesus paid it all. He removed the sin barrier. Right. And our part, if you want to talk about a part, is purely passive. Right. Hey, that'll preach. Purely passive. (laughs) And that is faith. We're simply persuaded. There's another P. You preachers out there, make sure you preach on that this Sunday. Purely passive persuasion. Hey, I've got my sermon for Sunday. Do you? Okay, good. It really is just a matter of believing in Jesus for what he promises. And if we add anything to that, then we're not believing in him for everlasting life. So I reject Dale's premise. How did he start out if someone believes in Jesus for everlasting life, but... Mm -hmm. There's no but. You don't add anything to that. Yes. All right. The second question is from William, and he says, was the Tanakh written to believers? And I had written a uh, blog back uh, about a month ago. You can check it out at faithalone.org, in which William says, you indicate that only a remnant of Israel was born again, and I tend to agree. But Hebrews eleven twenty nine and 30 appears to say that Israel passed through the Red Sea and defeated Jericho by faith. Perhaps they only had faith that God would deliver them in these two instances, question mark. It just seems hard to believe that they are listed among the heroes of the faith, but didn't have faith in God for salvation. How would you reconcile this? Well, that's a great question, uh, William, and I ended up and wrote a blog about it that you can see at our website, faithalone.org. When Hebrews eleven twenty nine and 30 talks about going through the Red Sea by faith and defeating the armies of Jericho by faith, they're not saying that the entire nation believed in the Messiah for everlasting life. I found a really good quote from F.F. Bruce in his commentary on Hebrews. Here's what he says, Leon. It might well have been cited as a further instance of Moses' faith, but here all those who came out of Egypt under Moses' leadership, 316, are associated with him in this act of faith. Nevertheless, it was Moses' faith that inspired them to move forward into the sea. They were full of fear and complaint as they saw the water before them and the pursuing Egyptian army overtaking them from the rear. Until, 
At Moses' command, they advanced and saw, quote, the salvation of Yahweh, Exodus 14, 13, unquote. I think that's a good point. Ultimately, what the author of Hebrews is doing is talking about Moses' faith, and in the case of Jericho, Joshua's faith. They are the ones who ultimately had led the people into their victories. Now, it would certainly be true that at least the vast majority of them did come to believe that God was going to keep the Red Sea parted and that God was going to give them victory over the people of Jericho. But neither of those have anything to do with believing in the Messiah for everlasting life. We can believe lots of things about God and yet not believe in the promise of everlasting life. I mean, how many people today believe that God helps them in their daily lives, believe that God has healed them, believe, you know, that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, believe Jesus rose again, that he's coming again. And yet, if you ask them, why should God let you into my heaven? They would say something like, well, if I persevere to the end, then he should let me in. Well, that's work salvation. So I would suggest that the people that The author of Hebrews mentions in Hebrews 11, people like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Moses, all of those people that are mentioned by name are born-again people. Yes, it is true that the people he mentions by name are born-again people, but that doesn't mean that he couldn't have included someone that wasn't born again. The fact that someone's listed there doesn't mean necessarily they're born again. And besides, in the case of Jericho and the Red Sea, he doesn't list all the names (laughs) (laughs) of the two million people that were going through the Red Sea or that were having victory at Jericho. So a good question, William. Just a quick word here about our online seminary. It begins again in February for the spring semester. Classes are free if you maintain a 3.0 GPA. We offer an unaccredited MDiv degree, and this spring you'll find classes on Bibliology and Ecclesiology with Bob Wilkin, Second Semester of New Testament Greek, New Testament Survey, Old Testament Survey, Soteriology, and Logos Bible Software. To register and for more details, go to gesseminary.org. Now let's return to our topic of the day. And I think we got a third question. And who is the third question from? Steve asked, because Christianity has become so focused on good works and spiritual perseverance, I'm thinking about converting to Orthodox Judaism. I have talked about it with a Jewish friend. Do you think Jesus will accept me more if I choose Judaism instead of struggling with Calvinism and Lordship Salvation? At least being Jewish... I will not be confused with the grace works debate. Say what? (laughs) Do you uh, grasp what he's saying there? He wants to be a Christian, and he thinks God will show him special grace if he becomes Jewish, it seems. You were saying during the break when we talked about this that there is a movement. What's it called? The Hebrews Roots Movement. Yeah. In which people, in varying degrees, they believe that by keeping the Old Testament law, God will show them special favor because they're either Jewish or they're pretending to be Jewish or they're sympathetic to Judaism. I need to study that more because I have heard about this Hebrew Roots movement and I need to look at it more. But Orthodox Judaism, as far as I understand it, holds the same views that the Pharisees held at the time of Christ. Their view is... If you keep God's commandments faithfully until death, then you're going to have a blessed afterlife. Orthodox Jews do believe in bodily resurrection. They do believe in life after death. They do believe Messiah is coming. Of course, they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah who came. They're looking for the first coming of Messiah, right? Yes. Their view is much like in John 5... 39 and 40. Could you look that up, Leon? John 5, 39 and 40. This is where Jesus is talking to a group of very legalistic Jews. Of course, remember John 1, 11 says he came to his own and his own received him not. 
John 5, beginning with verse 39. Yeah. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But ye are not willing to come to me that ye may have life. Now notice, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. One observation I would make is that when Jesus says that, they don't go, everlasting life, what are you talking about? (laughs) They know what he's talking about. Yeah, I've heard New Testament scholars and Old Testament scholars say there was no concept of everlasting life in the Old Testament. Well, if so, then what Jesus said here would have been met with, say what? (laughs) And they didn't do that. Second observation I'd make, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. By scriptures... He means what we call Genesis to Malachi, Mm -hmm. the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures. They were searching the Scriptures not to find the faith alone message. They were searching the Scriptures to find out what are the most important commandments. They were always asking Jesus, what are the greatest commandments? Yes. Why? Because they want to make sure that they've done enough to get into the kingdom. And then Jesus says, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. He's the only way. Orthodox Judaism of today, how did Steve put it? He said they don't confuse grace and works. Is that what he said? That's what he said. It seems to me that he would be correct if he said, if I go from a Lordship Salvation Church to Orthodox Judaism, I'm going to something quite similar. (laughs) Very similar. (laughs) Yeah. But if he's saying, if I go from a Lordship Salvation Church into a Jewish congregation, Orthodox Jewish congregation, I'm somehow now in the faith alone camp. No, I think it's kind of misguided, but you know, people come to faith out of, let's say, Catholicism or Mormonism, and they say, I'm going to stay in the Catholic Church in order to reach people. I'm going to stay in the Mormon Church to reach people. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens over time they get assimilated back in. And so even though they're still saved, they're no longer a witness. I would say the same thing is true with Judaism. If a Jew comes to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for everlasting life, yes, continue to evangelize your Jewish family and friends, but get involved in a local church because we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Mm -hmm. You're not assembling together with other believers if you're going to an Orthodox Jewish congregation. Well, thanks for your question. Keep sending your questions in, and remember to mention your radio stations you're listening to if you send in a question. And keep those questions short. Remember, keep grace in focus. focus. Would you be interested in some free e-books on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We would love to hear from you. Maybe you've got a question, comment, or some feedback. If you do, please don't hesitate to send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. And when you do, very important, please let us know your radio station call letters and the city of your location. On the next episode, how much of the Bible do we need to read each day in order to get a benefit from it? I hope you'll join us, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The preceding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.